and Mark Hall, one of the principals of Monster says, is we're losing sleep in LA over you guys. Now their worst nightmare has come true. The worst nightmare was, hey, if this guy gets going, if this company gets going, we're gonna be in trouble. A seemingly crazy CEO, awkward marketing, and controversial claims doesn't exactly sound like the recipe for success. With influencers such as Tana Mojo turning down $2 million to promote the brand, Bang is notorious for its aggressive marketing and offbeat nature, and they're almost viewed as a joke when they perhaps shouldn't be. I'm saying it right here, right now. Okay. Nobody, Nobody drinks <laughs> Bang Energy. <laughs> God puts that giant in your path, that Goliath. You gotta slay him in order to go to your destiny. You can't go around him, you can't go over him, you gotta slay him. This industry is ripe for the taking over and nobody's ethical, everybody's ripping everybody off. And I started to create my own supplement. Remember, there are many daddies, but there is only one Mac Daddy. Concerts, jewelry giveaways, and an ever-growing army of influencers. What is this so-called potent brain and body fuel? And is the often mock CEO actually a genius? If you ain't training, you ain't gaming. If you ain't banging, you ain't hanging. While the information available on Jack is limited, in a 2020 interview, he mentioned that he transitioned from an athlete to a high school chemistry teacher. However, after being fired eight times within nine years, he grew fed up of being an underpaid teacher. After all, his true passion was for fitness, and in his spare time, he was training clients and recommending them supplements. But after a protein powder he recommended to a friend caused him to almost suffocate in the shower, he decided to start sending off various supplements to be tested. I taught nine different science disciplines. I knew you could have these stuff tested even way back then. And began writing up exposés on the shoddy supplements he found, featuring one protein powder which turned out to be 0% protein. And after many requests from readers and clients for him to start a tested supplement company, he brought a small store which he referred to as his Vita House. Oh, you were living there? <laughs> yes. Wow. Sleeping on an air mattress. However, it was not until Jack began noticing some key opportunities in the market that business took off. What he identified was that these pre-workouts had this negative aura around them. The public viewed them as overpriced, shady stimulants that were only taken by stereotypical meatheads. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you had drinks like Monster and Rockstar, which Jack noticed also had a negative image, with associations to the devil, frightening media coverage, and kids named Kyle. Jack decided to redesign his pre-workouts to create a quick and easy grab-and-go energy drink, which, instead of being this negative, evil thing, was marketed as this healthy, super positive brand. People want to be positive, they want to be uplifted, and that's what we did. And so all the branding, super bright, highly saturated colors. And it was with this decision to remarket as healthy drinks away from bodybuilders and towards a more general audience that things started taking off. So why are some of even the most controversial influencers turning down huge paychecks to work with the company? Why are there so many credible criticisms surrounding them? And if the company really is this super positive, healthy brand, why are they not viewed this way? The one thing Jack Awok definitely understands is effective marketing. And while marketing can be done in a genuine, honest, and ethical way, 
Bang seems to take a more aggressive approach. And this aggressive approach is the major flaw of the company. You see, Bang was not the first supplement line which Jack launched. In fact, it was in 1993 when he formed VPX, which operated under the company Vital Pharmaceuticals, with one of their most popular products being the highly caffeinated drink, Redline. While an energy drink company fronting as a pharmaceutical company may concern some, it gets worse once you look into the many lawsuits filed against the company, relating to health problems and deceptive marketing, which ultimately tarnished the brand's name. So in 2012, Jack decided to wipe the slate clean with a new company known as Bang Energy. Basically, he took Redline, made the cans bigger, caffeine content higher, and sprinkled in a mix of supposedly beneficial ingredients including essential amino acids, super creatine, and ultra CoQ10. But here's the trick. They weren't going to focus on the typical audience you might expect. While most other companies would target such a product to gym enthusiasts, Vital Pharmaceuticals likely realised with Redline that the fitness community would see straight through their bold claims and only ever purchase the drink for its high caffeine content and taste. For the health claims and buzzwords to be effective, Bang would need to target a more inexperienced demographic, and the product names and brand colours suggest that the company has found such an audience. Often posting things like this, it is proper etiquette to drink Bang before all 8am lectures. Hashtag back to school tips. This is further supported by the fact that one of their biggest initial ambassadors was Daniel Cohn, who they decided to sponsor at just 13 years old. In response to the public's concern with the company using 13 year olds in bikinis to market their energy drinks, Bang pointed out that the kids they hire only promote the caffeine free version. And I'm not saying it's the same, but you don't see beer companies using literal children in swimwear to promote their products. It's safe to say that the company's marketing is not focused towards fully sane grown adults, with most of the company's advertising spend used to pay influencers with a young demographic to promote their drinks. It seems to be that the company is built around marketing caffeine to teenagers as if it's some other stimulant. Gratuitous amounts of energy! But at least the drinks are healthy, right? Similarly to Jack, I'm also tired of the lies and deception that supplement companies are using to purposefully rip off consumers. And that's the problem. These drinks are not at all what they're made out to be. And unfortunately, the people they're being marketed to are completely unaware. If we track back to the start, the very reason Jack started his brand was to provide honest supplements in an industry full of deceptive advertising. Supplement companies often try and create this illusion of complexity in fitness, using buzzwords and seemingly scientific graphs to make whatever they're selling to seem like a revolutionary shortcut to fitness. And while in the 90s all it would take is a cool sounding product name and bro science, as the public has become wiser, some more effort and actual science is required. Which, if you look at some of Bang Energy's products, they seem to include. Except the claims made seem too good to be true. For example, this pre-workout they sell, if you didn't know any better, would lead you to believe that taking it will allow you to gain another 6.9 pounds of muscle. However, the study behind this claim only had 16 participants over a four week period and was funded by Bang Energy themselves. The 6.9 pounds one individual gained was almost certainly not directly correlated to their so-called master blaster. In addition to this, one of the company's major USPs is the so-called super creatine. And while creatine is one of the most well-researched supplements, which for some people is effective in increasing power output, Bang has faced lawsuits for claiming to have invented super creatine, which believe it or not, is not technically creatine at all and may not provide the same benefits. But ignoring super creatine's misleading name, the recommended dosage of creatine is between 3 and 5 grams. And while Bang suspiciously do not seem to mention the exact quantity, estimates predict that each can contains just 25 milligrams of super creatine. 
To be blunt, if you wanted to get the recommended 5 grams of creatine from Bang Energy, you would probably die after consuming 200 cans. But the claims don't stop there. Chief Scientific Officer Jack, who stated, Humbly speaking, I am by far the most innovative and prolific scientist in the history of sports nutrition, also claims that Bang can actually reverse aging and cure mental retardation. You can solve mental retardation as we age. It's pretty clear that the company is simply funding their own low quality studies, of which they mispresent to benefit their sales, making bold, unethical scientific claims and empty promises. A method the company seems to have learned from the Lorax. Well, here goes another lame Saturday. Dude, I don't think so. <laughs> huh? Hey. <laughs> O'Hare Purified Air. Now comparing the company to O'Hare's Air might be slightly harsh. After all, at least Bang Energy has one significant ingredient listed along with its content, with that being caffeine. While I'll link down below a critical article looking at the ingredients of energy drinks in general, I'd like to focus on caffeine. After all, this seems to be what the company is built around, and their drinks contain more caffeine than most energy drinks on the market, with the original Bang containing 357 milligrams, which has since been lowered to 300. To put things into perspective, that's equivalent to almost four Red Bulls or two Monsters, a large amount by any means. And while the media frequently demonises energy drinks, most of the horror stories of severe side effects were a result of excessive caffeine consumption and or pre-existing health issues. If you look at the credible existing scientific research, caffeine can be beneficial to the healthy adult, notably for increased wakefulness, reduced fatigue and a possible increase in energy expenditure, with Lyle McDonald citing 100 calories burned per 600 milligrams of caffeine consumed, which works out to be about 50 calories burned when you drink a can of Bang. However, in Dr. Eric Helm's book, he states, the claims that caffeine produces fat loss or reduces energy intake are inconsistent at best, concluding caffeine is not a dieting aid from a fat loss perspective. And either way you look at it, Caffeine is simply not potent enough to be the secret to fighting obesity. What's more is that for some people, consumption of large amounts of caffeine can also result in many adverse effects, such as increased anxiety, an energy crash, and insomnia. If this is the case, it's probably doing more harm than good, as sleep is way more important than any supplement. Whether or not you choose to take caffeine depends on your individual lifestyle. As with most things, the dose is usually the poison. So of course, don't go drinking two Bang Energy drinks per day. For a credible analysis of caffeine as a whole, I strongly recommend the resource examine.com, examine.com. The best resource out there right now is examine.com. Supplements are not at all that important. Even one of the most well-researched, most effective supplements for muscle building, creatine, has a very minimal effect. If you look at the nutrition pyramid, And what's more, if you look at the pyramid of scientific evidence, you'll see that many modern day supplement companies are using a low level of evidence to promote their hardly effective ingredients, with many of the studies they used being massively biased or cherry picked to support their marketing campaign. When it comes to energy drinks, I believe there needs to be a middle ground. They shouldn't be demonised or marketed as healthy, in the same way Diet Coke isn't healthy. If you want to get the most for your money and avoid potentially adverse side effects, it's best to be a late adopter when it comes to supplements. A new miracle ingredient will come and go every year. If you ever feel inclined to buy a bang, buy it for the same reason that you'd buy any other sugar-free energy drink and not for the ridiculous health claims. Now Jack himself does seem to have a nice family and his work ethic is admirable. After around 14 years of writing, he's also got a new book coming out, apparently packed with over 1,000 scientific references, which I cannot wait to buy. Maybe Jack Owok is the nutritional genius that he claims to be. Huh? Seems like TV from other dimensions has a somewhat looser feel to it. Yeah, it's got an almost improvisational tone. Florida man, who's also a scientist, saving the world with super creatine, amino acids, and caffeine. But hold on, there's more. 
He's being threatened by monsters. And what do you do then? It's called Jack Owak Bang the Movie.